Music, Excel, Worksheet, Scales, Intervals, Modes, and more. Constructing the note names, note number, and modes part of the worksheet. Get ready some coffee and be careful. You know, because just yesterday a man was killed by his own guitar. You know, upon investigation it was found that the guitar killed him because, quote, he was picking on me. Rumor has it you killed a man, Billy. Yeah, Billy, what you kill him for? He was hacking on me. End quote. You know, I, I, I think that's the reason finger style is so popular these days, you know, because, because the reduced picking is less likely to lead your guitar, you know, to murder you. But for pick addicts like me, that's not an option, man. You know, because, you know, I like to live on the edge, picking at the peak. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to it, it's a great tool to practice with. So currently we have two tabs down below. The first tab is going to be the example tab. The second tab right now is just a blank sheet, a blank tab because this is going to be the start of the construction process of our worksheet which we will do in a step-by-step -step process going back to the example tab in a prior presentation we discussed the overall structure of the worksheet and the purpose of the worksheet and how basically this worksheet is an improvement from a prior worksheet that we put together noting that this worksheet is useful to kind of use along with our practice as we practice with the guitar or some other type of instrument in music theory although this is designed specifically towards uh, the guitar but the creation of the worksheet is also helpful both from an Excel standpoint as well as a music theory standpoint. If you don't want to build the worksheet in Excel because you're just interested in the music theory, I still think it's useful to follow along and even write this stuff down on a sheet of paper. So at the end result, we will be constructing a fretboard on the right hand side. The fretboards will have the low string on top because I think that's the easiest way to visualize the guitar as we discussed in a prior presentation because when looking at the guitar, I would like to have everything going from left to right as though I'm using the guitar. From the perspective of using the guitar, I am behind the guitar and therefore I'm going to have that low E string on top. And so that's going to be one of our, our core concepts. If you do not want to do that, you can do the same thing and just flip it the other way around to have, in essence, the high string on top if you so choose. We're going to be constructing our worksheet over here, which allows us to help map out the scale, the related modes, as well as the complement modes if we want to do that. In order to construct this, which is possibly the most useful point when practicing, we're also going to build these tables. These tables will be used for us to then construct our worksheets that will, will, will culminate in this table here. But these worksheets in and of themselves are also useful just from a music theory standpoint in terms of the number of the notes, the name of the notes, the modalities, numbering the modalities, and then after we do this, this is what we'll do this time. After we do that, we will map out the intervals and the names of the intervals and use those to construct these tables, mapping out the intervals per mode, the relations of the modes and the different scales, and then the names of the intervals, mapping them out. And then we will use that to construct the core of our worksheet the worksheets I think that are most useful when we're trying to map out actual fingering on the fretboard. All right, so we're gonna start off with just these, these two tables over here, and I'll try to explain my concepts and why I'm building them this way just basically as we go. All right, so I'm gonna go to the blank tab. If you don't have this workbook, you could just open up a blank tab. I usually start off by zooming in a bit. I'm at 100%. I usually hold down control and use the scroll bar to zoom in. So now I'm at like 265. Then I'm going to select the triangle to select the entire worksheet, the entire worksheet populated. I'm going to put the baseline underlying formatting that I'd like to have most of the worksheet in that I will then deviate from as needed by right clicking on the worksheet. I'm going to format all the cells of the worksheet. And I typically start off with currency 
and then I, I have negative numbers uh, bracketed typically, although I don't think I'm gonna have any negative numbers, so that won't be a problem. No dollar sign. And I don't want any decimals because we're working basically with numbers related to uh, units that don't need decimals. So I'm gonna remove the decimals. Okay, I also like to have the baseline as bold. So home tab, font, bold. I think that's just useful for people uh, in a screen recording. So you might not need it yourself if you're not doing a screen recording, but it might be useful just to give it a little bit more pop on the worksheet as well. Obviously, if you do that, then you can't add further emphasis by bolding something. <laughs> but we're gonna use colors and stuff to give further emphasis. So that's how we will work it. So let's start off with a with a uh, our numbers. So I'm gonna say numbers, notes, and my headers, I'm gonna make them, this is my headers for my table, and this is gonna be note and number. That's gonna be my headers. So first let's start off with the musical alphabet. Now you might be used to seeing the musical alphabet, you know, kind of from left to right. I'm gonna put it from top to bottom because I typically like to see a column kind of format for our tables. So I'm gonna say it starts off with an A, I'm gonna put capitals for the note names, and then when I'm looking at a sharp or flat, I'm gonna use the term A, B. So that means that this is an A sharp or a B flat, meaning when we look at the piano, for example, the piano is tuned to the key of C in that all the white notes are basically the key of C. And then you can see where the sharps and flats are on the, on the piano because where there's no black note in between the two white notes, that's gonna be a half step, right? So this whole half step terminology has its pros and its cons uh, because it means there's multiple names to, to different notes but it also means that we can construct all of our scales with every kind of note in the alphabet. So there's kind of pros and cons to it. And there's also kind of issues with the abbreviations of sharp and flat. Uh, and which if I was to abbreviate them differently than this, I would end up with a pretty long thing, right? I could say, well, this is either going to be an A sharp or a B flat with different abbreviations. But I think the simplest thing to do so that we can reference to it and take as little space as possible is just to say a sh small AB representing either A sharp or B flat, right? And then I'm gonna say B, and then I'm gonna say C. There's no gonna, not gonna be any sharp or flat between the B and the C, which you can visualize on the piano because there's no black note between the B and the C. And then we have a, a CD, which I can call C sharp or D flat. And then I've got a D, and then we've got the D, E, which is gonna be D sharp or E flat, and then an E, and then we've got an F because there's no sharp or flat. So if you have visualized the piano, there's no black note between the E and the F because it's just a half step. And then we've got the F, G, which is an F sharp or G flat, and then we've got the G, and then we've got the G A, which is a G sharp or A flat. So these are all the notes just in our musical alphabet, which at first glance, people usually learn and say, well, that's gonna be really easy because it's just the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But obviously when we add the sharps and flats, we cannot easily memorize it just going up and down because we can't sing the song by saying A, uh, a sharp B, B, C sharp D, it doesn't really work. And if we add the fact that we could name it either a sharp or a flat, then it becomes even more complicated to kind of memorize it this way. So we have to, we have to basically memorize those notes and be able to see them going forward. So when I go forward, it's A, A sharp, uh, B, C, C sharp, D, and so when I go backwards, D, and by the way, just learning the musical alphabet backwards, try to sing from G back to A. You're not used to doing that, right? Because most of the time we go from A forward, not from Z backwards. So, so you would think at first thought, you could say, well, I could say the numbers forward and backwards. I should be able to do it with the letters, but not so easy. 
So you can learn to do that, and it's useful to do that with music. But again, when you add the sharps and flats, it's still going to be quite difficult. But when I go backwards, that's when we use the flat, right? So D, uh, D flat, C, B, B flat, and so on and so forth. So these, so those, so those. That's just going to be our given right now. We're just going to say that's our given of the musical alphabet. Now, if I was to number these, I'm going to use numbers. This is what we don't often do in Western music is just give them an absolute number because usually when we talk about numbers, we're talking about relative numbers of, say, relative positions or numbers related to intervals and steps and that kind of thing. We don't usually call like the note A the number one, but it's useful to do that in this case, absolute numbers. I'm not saying that A is number one of an A scale. I'm saying no, A represents in numerical format a one. A and one are two names for the same thing. If you can code switch back and forth between the absolute number of the note and the letter, you have the best of both worlds. In Western music, we can create our scales that basically have one letter in of each of the alphabet from A to G for most of the scales. Although we have to deal with the sharps and flats, which is kind of cool, but leads to different naming conventions, which gets wonky. And we have the numbers, which are clean and easy, although we don't have the ability to, to have each note on the musical alphabet. So there's pros and cons to having both of those things in place. And we can also use the numbers to count backwards easily and to count intervals in terms of units by using simple subtraction. So I think it's highly useful to do, to learn the numbers. If you don't want to, that's okay. The numbers are also useful from a coding perspective or just an Excel table construction perspective because they allow us to then to then pull in numerically as we link our tables together. So they do have two uses, but it's not just an Excel use here. I do think musically, I, I practice learning the numbers and code switching from number to letter and then letter to number. And I find it useful, uh, very useful. And so I'm gonna, now I can select these two and then I can put my cursor on this fill handle and drag it down and Excel's gonna say, hey, look, and see how it, it gives me a little number as I go down. It's gonna say, hey, I recognize that. And I'm gonna go down to 12. There's our 12 notes. So there we have that. I'm gonna select these header ones and do what I usually do for a header cell. Go up to the home tab up top. I'm gonna to go into the fonts group and I'm gonna hit the drop down for the bucket. I usually make them black and then the lettering white. I'm not gonna make this into a table because uh, I think it's actually easier this is kind of like a table, but I'm not gonna convert it to a table by going to insert and entering a table because I'm not gonna sort it in any other way. And I think actually referring to this is a little bit easier actually when it's not a table uh, in some ways when I start to man maneuver this. Maybe I'll touch on that as we go. All right, so then what I want over here, what I'd like to do is when I start to populate things such as populating my fretboard, I want each unit of the fretboard, as we see over here in our example, if I go over to the fretboard, when we use this to populate this fretboard, I want to see the fretboard in terms of letters and numbers. Now, notice what's happening here is what I'll first do is I'll make it in just numbers only. That is one reason why the numbers are useful, because the numbers allow me to easily construct my fretboard and then use the V lookup to get the letters but I still wanna have the numbers in there as well. So some people might not like that. You might just want the letters in there, but I think it's useful to have the absolute number and the letter. So that's what we're gonna do with it later. So I need to put these two things together uh, in one cell so I have both the number and the letter. We could do that with a nice little formula that's gonna tie these two things together. I can't say something like I want this plus this because this is not a numerical term. So, but what I can do is like a text uh, formula. So this is kind of like a text formula where I can say I want to have equals. Anytime I have a formula, I'm going to say equals. I want this one, the number one, but instead of making a formula to it, I want to say that and something else. So what I do there is I put an and 
So for Excel, that and, you can think of it, I think of it kind of like a knot. It almost looks like a knot with that symbol. And it's just tying it together to this other piece, which is just going to be in the format of text. And because th this is just one letter in the cell, I don't need any quotes around it or anything like that because it's a formula. So I'm just going to say that and that and then enter and boom. So now we've got this giving it both formats of how I want to represent the note A, which is a one and an A. So in absolute terms, A is a one. If I'm thinking about absolute terms of notes, not relative positions, and it's an A. So then I can copy that down by just double clicking this fill handle, boom. And so now I've got the same formula down here, boom, boom, all the way down. So that's going to be that's going to be the note names that we're going to use. So let's clean this up. I'll, I'll center this. I'm going to go home tab uh, alignment and center. And then I'll select this whole bit and go home tab font group drop down. I'm going to make a table around that. And then I would like to make this as tight as possible. So I'm going to select from A to C put my cursor in between any of these columns so the cursor looks like that, not like that, but like that, and double click, boom. So now that it's as tight as possible, that's why I try to keep my headers as small as possible, which is a problem oftentimes when you're making columns because sometimes you're gonna wanna have a longer title, which you can then wrap, but when you wrap it, it's gonna extend the, the size of this cell, which I don't like to do. Your other option, is that you can put a name in two cells if you're not going to make it into a table so that you don't have uneven kind of cell uh, widths here or is that heights, I guess. So that's going to be that one. So then let's do the mode. So I'm going to make this one small. I'm going to go, I'm going to put my cursor between the D and the E so it looks like that. Make it small, bring it into right there so we have a skinny D. And then I'm going to say this is going to be the modes number. And then I'm going to call this the mode name. Okay, so I'm going to make this one a little bit larger, put my cursor between these two. Now the number of modes is equivalent to the number of, of uh, items or notes in a standard scale, like a major scale. So we typically compare everything to the major scale, which has seven notes. So notice we have 12 notes here, and we're going to pick seven of those notes and that's going to be our how we construct our scale, which we'll talk about how to do that later. Uh, and but that means the modes can kind of we can think of them in relation to the scale. So there's seven notes in a scale, and we can think of each of those notes as the beginning note of its own mode. And that's how and that's how we want to start thinking about this. So I'm going to make this home tab, font group, black, white, and center. And then I'm going to say one to seven, one, two. I'm going to select those two, put my cursor on the fill handle, drag it down. It gives me a nice little indicator to show me I'm at seven right there. There's seven of those. Now, this is where I might want to say, hey, I'd like to make this thinner, but I lose the name. So I'm going to double click and keep it that wide. I could wrap it like this. Like if I wrap this, but uh, if I wrap, if I do that, then again, it makes this what too long. And I, I don't want to do that unless I really have to. Your other option is to put like the hashtag underneath it so that you had it looking like this. So you can say this is uh, modes number if you want the number down here, which allows you then to make this thinner and you can still make this look like a header by doing that. That's another option. You can't easily convert this into a table though, because now you have two up top if you wanted to go to insert and make a table. So I'm just gonna keep it the way it was, having a slightly wide header uh, like so, and we'll do that. All right, so then the mode names. Now the mode names, I'm just gonna write them down over here so you can see them. The first one is the major, I'll put major, I'm going to delete this later, but it's also called the Ionian. So that's, I think, what is it, Latin or Greek or Greek name, I think, or something. So, and then the next, we don't, we just name it with the, with the weird name, Dorian, and then 
Phrygian, and then Lydian. Hopefully, I spell these correctly. And then Mixolydian, and then this one is the minor. Minor, I think that's how you spell that. And then that, but it's also called Aeolian, and then the Locrian, and this one would be over here. So we, so these two, to Western music, are our major two that we give their own name and we compare everything else to those scales because we can break all of these modes which we can say are their own scales into in essence major or minor modes and then we can compare the major modes to the major or ionian scale the minor modes to the minor or aeolian scale but notice these are all basically related they're all tied together uh, and and so I could you know we could use any of these modes as kind of like our key that we tie everything else to, but theoretic but usually we use of course the major or Ionian to tie everything to, and that's kind of like our master key that we can refer everything back to, and then sometimes of course we think of the minor scale or Aeolian as as the core minor scale and we compare the minor modes to it. So we start to say, okay, here's the major scale. What are the intervals of the major scale? And how do the other major modes differ from the major scale? Here's the minor or Aeolian scale, which is the core minor mode. And how do the other minor modes relate to it? Because they're going to be most similar to the minor. Okay, so the other thing I want to do is that is that when we label out our modes, we typically then will, if this was a major scale, I want to know, if I look at this worksheet over here, for example, we want to know, like, if this is the major scale, I want to know not only the relative position, these numbers now represent relative position. So C, the absolute number four is now is a C but I'm going to give it a relative position number one, the first position in the scale versus the second position in the scale is absolute note number six, which is note name D. And then the third note in the scale, it has a relative position three, is absolute note number eight, which is an E. And then the fourth number relative position in the C major scale has an absolute note number nine, which is an F, and then the fifth uh, relative position in the C major scale has an absolute number note number 11, which is a G, and so on and so forth. Not only do I want to know that, but I also want to note, does it, will I construct a major or minor from those uh, positions? So you might have memorized this, this formula for major scales is the, the relative position one is major, and then two is minor, you build a minor chord from it, three is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor, seven is diminished. Now we can represent that oftentimes people represent that with an with an uppercase Roman numeral for a major, and then a lowercase Roman numeral for a minor. So uppercase Roman numeral lowercase, lowercase, uh, and then and then uppercase, uppercase, lower, and then the dot is I'm going to put there for the lowercase and diminished minor third with a flat five is what that's going to represent. Now we can go a step further than that though and also say I'm looking beyond just the one, three, five. The third is what defines it as a triad that will be created, three notes an accord that will either be major or minor and I can go beyond that and think about the rest of the notes that would create the seventh the ninth the eleventh and the thirteenth which are seven notes these three notes having a different name representing the notes that are skipped two four and six if we were just to map out the scale and so I can label this as basically the Dorian in other words this is a minor triad that will be created because the Dorian scale is a minor mode, but we're not talking about D minor, D Aeolian. We're talking about if we construct the whole scale from it, it's D Dorian, which will have the same three notes. 
if I construct a scale of of the of 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 a minor triad, right? So that's going to be the idea here. So that so what I want to do over here is is label that, and I'm going to start thinking of the Ionian as an absolute Roman numeral number one, even if I'm going to represent it as a different position in relation to another scale, because I'm going to try to represent, if I say that, I, that I'm representing something as a Roman numeral lowercase three, I'm going to think of that the third as the Phrygian. I think of that in relation to the major scale, even though I could think of it relative to any other mode because the major scale is the thing that we usually use as our key that we refer everything to. So I'm, so I'm gonna name these modes in relation to the major scale one through seven. I'm gonna use the Roman numerals. So how do I get a Roman numeral? I'm gonna say this is gonna be Roman. So this is a formula for the Roman numeral and then I can double click on this or hit tab. Now I've got this indentation and then inside of that, I'm gonna put a one if I left that like that, it would look like that. There's the Roman numeral one. Double clicking on that though, that's not all I want. I want Roman numeral number one. And then I'm gonna to add to that the name of Ionian, but I also want a space. So now I have to put some text into it. So how do I do that? I put a not in it and that's my not. I need a space. Now, because I'm not using a formula, anytime I use a text without referring to a cell, I have to put uh, the quotes. So there's a quote, space, and then quotes. That puts a space in there. Then that space needs to be tied to the name. So I'm going to put and, and now I'm going to type in the name. I'm going to put quotes, Ionian, and then end quotes. So that's kind of an intimidating formula, but it helps us to practice tying in the formula to text. And so now we have, I'm going to represent this as Roman numeral one, which I'm going to use as shorthand to refer to the Ionian mode, right? And so this one's going to be two. It's going to be the Dorian. I need a Roman numeral, but I want the Roman numeral now to be lowercase. So this is a little tricky. I could, I could do it this way. It's going to be lowercase equals lowercase tab. And then within that one, I'm going to embed another formula without closing that up. This is going to be Roman tab. So it's going to be lowercase and then Roman numerals. This is going to be a two. I can actually refer to this over here. I should, I should have done that before tying out to the two. And then I'm going to close that up and then I'm going to close this up. So now I've closed those two brackets and then I'm going to tie to that with an and, a not, and I need a space quotes, space, quotes, and then I'm going to tie that to that, typing out the Dorian. So, and quotes to type a text, Dorian. So again, pretty intimidating looking formula, but hopefully, and I got to end the quotes. You see how that, now if I double click on this one, instead of just putting a one, I'm going to delete that and instead refer to this one. So it ties out. So then we'll just do the same thing here. Let's just do it again. This one's the Phrygian. So I'm going to say this equals, this is also lower, lowercase tab, Roman tab. And then I'm going to refer to that number three, close up the two brackets. There's a bracket here, bracket here, close those up. And that would give me a lowercase three, but I want to tie to that with an and, and then quotations, space, a space mark quotation, and then tie to that and with a knot of an and, quotation so I can type in then Phrygian, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A-N, I hope, end the quote and boom. Let's do it again. This one would be a major. This is a major mode, which would start with a major uh, chord. So we're going to say this equals, and I don't have to put lower because upper is the default. So just Roman tab of that number four, close up the brackets, and then that would give me an uppercase Roman numeral four, but I want to add to that with a not, an and, and then quotes, space, quotes, and then tie to that, and the, 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 the Lydian, so quotes, and then type in L-Y-D-I-A-N, end quote, 
enter. There's my uppercase Roman numeral because it's a major mode, major triad, which would create the major mode of Lydian. Now we'll do the same thing here with the fifth. This is going to be equals. This is also major, so I don't need a lower, just Roman tab. There's the five. Close it up, tying to that with an and. The space, I need to type it in, so I have to put quotes around it, quote, space, quote, and then tie to that with an and, another uh, uh, typing of quotes, and then this is going to be uh, the, the quote, and this is going to be five mixolydian, and then I'm going to say enter. Actually, I don't think I need two quotes. I think I'm making this longer than I need to. I'm going to say this is going to be, let me test it. This is going to be lower equals lower tab. And then there's going to be Roman embedded tab. Then this five. Now I got to close it up with two brackets. That closes it up, which would give me a lowercase Roman numer numeral Aeolian. And then I'm going to tie to that with an and. And then this, and I could put a space and then just type in Aeolian. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing two quotes? I don't know. This would be easier. A E O L I A N. And then boom. I was trying to tie. I think that is fine. Yeah, that would be easier to do. So all of these up top, I could have, instead of doing two ands, I could have just got rid of the second and and put the space and Mixolydian within the same brackets. So that would be a simpler way to do it. But I was getting paid by the, by the code. Uh, so I made it longer and I got paid more. <laughs> I don't know. So then the next one, this is going to be lower. Now this one is, I want to put a dot after it because it's diminished. So I have another complication. So it's going to be lower because it, it still has a minor third. And so I'm going to say lower and then Roman tab. There's the seven close, close. But then I want to put a dot after it to represent that it's diminished because it has a flat five. So then I'm going to say, this time I'm going to say, and to tie to it, brackets, and then I'm going to put a dot, and then, and then I'll put a space, and then locrian, and then close it up and enter. Boom. So there's our table. All right, so I'm going to close this up. I'm going to get rid of this, and then I'm going to put my brackets around here, home tab, uh font group brackets around that make this as small as i can boom that's as small as it can be to fit everything in there and now i think everything looks correct it, i think that's right so now we'll use these to continue constructing our next bit uh and 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 the next bit will be these intervals and once i have these three construction tables then we'll put together our our whole steps and half steps to look at like the general formula of how of the different modes. Uh, and then we'll, and then we'll use those to build these tables and then we'll use those tables and all that stuff to build up our primary worksheet. Well, this worksheet and then convert that to most likely our primary worksheet here. So, and this will all tie together and it's going to, it's going to be great.